export it. All right. So if I want to do mesh, what is my first step? Always want to do mesh. Labeling your polarities. Yeah, labeling my polarities, exactly. Now, one of the things that I did here, and it doesn't matter, I think on the homework, I pretty much left everything in a, in a clockwise direction, but my mesh currents here, I've got two of them going counterclockwise and one of them going clockwise. There's nothing wrong with that. Why did I do that? I guess because I, I liked the fact that both of IC and IB went in the same direction as that current source, but it, it doesn't matter, all right? So here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna label my polarity. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna call this guy uh, V1. All right. Any idea why I called that V1 like that? Why that polarity? It helps with polarity V0. It, it does what? Because you're going to do it step by step when you're doing the meshes? Well, then... I, I am. So I'm going to do my polarities first, right? But the reason I, I like doing it plus minus the way I did is because, because why? The currents flow from positive mm -hmm. to negative. Yeah. The passive sign convention, the current's going to flow into the plus terminal. So I, I like that. Um, so then I'm going to keep going. I'm going to call it. So, so this guy is going to be my R1. Okay. This is going to be R2. This is going to be R3. This is going to be R4, R5, and R6, okay? So if I tried to do the same thing, I wanted to keep those polarities the same, what would I do in that 2.5 ohm resistor, R2? Minus plus. Yep, minus plus, like that. Okay, and I'll call that V2. I like to give them names like that too. Now, V delta is V delta. It's, it's a deep, there's a dependent source that exists here. All right, so I'm going to have to leave that one the way it is. All right. Um, following that same idea, what should I do down here for this, for the R4, the 8 ohm resistor? You go positive to negative. Yep. I'm going to do positive to negative like that. I'm going to call it V4. Okay. Now this guy is already going plus to minus. It's already defined for me because I got a dependent source going on. And then for the 6 ohm, which way, how about, which way on that one? The left side is going to be positive. Wow, that was like the voice of God there. All right, so we got uh, very echoey. It's according to the like the positive to negative, but uh, the direction is. What was that? I'm talking about the talking about the R three. Yeah, what about? It's uh, from the positive to negative, mm -hmm. but it's from the clockwise direction it doesn't so this this is the point it doesn't matter okay, okay. so if anti clockwise then it will be goes from the like uh, so so the, the important thing is that it it doesn't really ever matter all right whether it's clockwise counterclockwise i just need to make a set of definitions and then write equations that are consistent with those definitions. Okay. So, so let's, let's just say, let's just say you were given the definitions that we gave right here. You didn't have to choose them. I gave you these. Let's just make sure we write equations that are consistent with these. Okay. So in, in this particular, and hopefully that'll answer your question. We'll, we'll see. I, this is important. I mean, the key thing is clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever, whatever, clock direction you want to go, the important thing is to write equations that are consistent with the definitions. So, all right, in this particular case, I'm doing mesh, okay? So if I'm doing mesh in this particular case, how many equations do I need here? Well, I would say three. Three, because there's three meshes, right? Now, um, what's the first equation? What's the first one that jumps out at you, hopefully? Super mesh. There's a super mesh here, right? Basically, so if I have current sources, what so what tells me that I have a super mesh relationship? You have current sources in between the meshes. Current sources in between meshes. All right. So in this case, how many current sources do I have in between meshes? Two. Two. One. Two. 
Oh, two, sorry, yeah. Two, right? One of them is dependent source. That still counts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, dependent source. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's let's do the simple one first. The simple one here is I've got a I've got a a mesh here, or or basically I've got a current source shared by the mesh B and the mesh C. So, what's the auxiliary equation or whatever that would go with that? For that current that that 0.5 amp depend independent source. 0 0.5 equals I B plus R C. Yep. 0 0.5 equals I B plus I C. You know, and if I want to think about this guy in MATLAB, I could say plus zero times I A. Right? There's a there's a zero entry on that particular guy. Right? That's a nice easy equation to do. Where's my super mesh? It's around the entire exterior, like yep. part of the circuit. Yeah. So what I want, I'm gonna draw a red line through that. Okay. There's my super mesh like that. <clears throat> so let's do KVL around the super mesh. Because remember, we're writing KVLs. KVLs are in terms of, of what? What is KVL? Voltage. Yeah, the sum of the voltages around the loop equals zero. So I'm gonna write it in terms of voltage. Then I'm gonna plug in current, all right? When, when I do nodal method, I'm writing KCL. So I'm writing for currents, but I'm solving for voltages. When I do mesh, I'm writing KVLs, but I'm solving for currents. Jumping too far ahead in those steps can really cause some problems, right? So, so I'm gonna say, I, again, I like to start down here in this corner and then work back to that corner. So I'm gonna say zero equals, so first thing I do is I go through a 193 volt source. So how do I write that? Is it minus 193? That is correct, yes, minus 193, because I go minus the plus. Yeah. Then I get to R1 up there. Yeah. What do I do with that? Negative V1. Negative V1. Okay. Then, then what about V2? Negative V2. Negative V2. Then what? Plus V delta. Plus V delta. Uh, plus 0.8 V V naught or V theta. Yeah, plus 0.8 V theta. Okay. Then what? Plus V4. Plus V4. Minus V theta. Minus V theta. Minus V6. Minus V6. Okay. <clears throat> now that's a KVL that's consistent with my definitions. All right. Everybody follow that. Can you uh, tell me what the reason you decide to do the whole super mesh instead of doing the uh, mesh by mesh? Well, so I can't do mesh by mesh here, right? Because I have current sources that, sh that I have across the meshes. And when I have a current source that is shared between two meshes, I don't have any good way to write a relationship for that. So think about it. If I, if I try to do a KVL around, let's say mesh C, I would say I have, let's, and let's say I started up in the top corner. I would have V delta plus 0 0.8 V theta plus V4. And then I have to go through the current source. What's the voltage across the current source? Zero, isn't it? Nope. You don't know. I don't know. It's don't VX. Know. I don't know, you know where I'd have to say VX is oh, yeah. at. So I don't know anything about it. Everybody wants to say it's zero. It's whatever the circuit tells it to be, right? So somehow I would have to solve and find what VX is. So because there's no relationship there, we say, well, let's go through, let's go through a loop where we do have a relationship. The loop we do have a relationship is that super mesh. There's no current sources in it, right? So I'm good to go. Anytime I have a current source, I can't write a voltage current relationship for it, right? So I can't write a KVL with that guy. I can, like I just did there, but I, it, it's not very helpful to me. I just introduced a new variable that I need to solve for. All right. So in this case, if you want to, can you combine those uh, two meshes that is sharing the uh, current? So, so you could, what you would end up doing when you combine them is you would get the super mesh KVL. Okay. Because you would, you would, in this case, you would, you would have, so you've got, you've got three meshes. If you did 
So what you would end up doing is you would do one KVL around mesh A, one around mesh B, and one around mesh C. When, and then you would basically have then five variables, three currents and two voltages. Yeah. So, and when you combine those, you would get back into three equations. Yeah. And you would get this equation when you combine them. So anytime you see current sources shared between meshes, that tells you you have to look for the super mesh. And, and the way you look for the super mesh is you basically say, well, remove, act like the current sources aren't there in the circuit. Just pretend that they're not, they're not present in your mind. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. All right. Now what I got to do is I got to figure out how to get this in terms of currents. So I'm going to say 193. I'm going to bring that over. And let's do this carefully. 193 equals negative V1. All right. So don't even think about that negative sign. Just think about V1. How do I write V1? Yep. IA times what I'm going to call R1 in this case. And there's a minus sign in front of it. The minus sign came from KVL. Okay. Minus sign came from KVL. The minus sign did not come from Ohm's law. All right. So I want to be careful. We've got all, we've got, there's signs, negative signs can come from two places here. One from KVL, one from the passive sign convention. Once I bring capacitors in, they can come from three places because then it can come from the impedance as well. All right. So there's a lot of ways that you can mess up. Okay. All right. So let's keep going. So I did this term right here. Now let's do the minus, so I got minus V2. All right, so I'm gonna say minus. Now what's V2? The way I've defined V2, what's the current going into the plus terminal? IB R2. Yep, IB R2. Like that, okay. Then I get to V delta. So that's already plus, okay. So what's the current going into the plus terminal there? 0 0.5 uh, R3? I see, right? Is this this current here, this mesh current is what's entering it, right? So I would say plus R3 times IC. So, sorry, IC times R3. All right, that's V delta. So I've gotten these two. Now, uh, 0 0.8 V theta. So that means I got to look at where's V theta. V theta is on this, is on my R5 here. Okay. So I have 0 0.8 times V theta. So what's V theta? IB times R5. IB times R5. So notice IB, if I follow it around, IB goes into the plus terminal of, of that resistor. So I would say times IB times R5, like that. All right, so now I got this guy down. Then I have V4, all right? How would V4 be set up? Which current's going to the plus terminal? I see. I see, so I've got I C times R4, so that's done. Then I've got V theta there. So minus V theta. So I have a minus sign that I put out there just because KV already has one. V theta is, we already said it, IB times R5. So it's minus IB times R5, okay? And then I go into V6. So it's minus V6. So I'm out of space there. I'm gonna write it down here. Minus, just because there's already a minus. And then how do I write V6? IA R6. I A times R six, and that's the whole thing. Okay, that's a long, nasty equation because I had what is that um, eight things in it? All right, but that's my equation. So what I'm going to do is try to get that into one one sort of nice relationship between uh, I A I B and I C. So I have one ninety three equals. All right, if I, if I lump all the terms together, um, what I end up getting is minus 
R1 IA. And then I get, but I didn't write this in terms of IB times negative R2. Um, and then plus 0 0.8 R5 minus R5. And then I have, yeah, so, uh, oh yeah, this is, this guy here, the first term is minus R, so yeah, just, let me look at it. minus R1 minus R6. This guy is minus R1 minus R6 times <laughs> IA. And then I've got my IC term. Let me look back at this. So my IC terms, I've got, so this is where I usually do this on paper before I start just combining stuff, right? Usually I kind of tick these off. So I'll make, you know, I'll just say, well, here's my two IA terms. And then here's an IB term. And here's an IB term. And then here's an IB term, right? So I combine all those together. And then I have IC terms. So there's one IC term. And then there's another IC term here. So my IC terms are, what was it? It was R3 minus R. That's R3 plus R4. Plus R4. Yeah, R3 plus R4 times IC. Okay, that's my equation. Okay, you can see obviously right off the bat, <clears throat> this is why Talking now about exam three, what's exam three gonna be like? It's gonna be a lot like that last problem on exam one, where again, there's 110 of you guys that'll take the test. I guarantee 105 of you will get the wrong numbers. All right, on a test, I know that's gonna happen. As long as, as, long as, as, long as nobody's cheating, and it, 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 probably everybody will get the wrong numbers. The important thing is getting these equations right. All right, because that's really where the work is, the numbers, you know, you can always make those work, but it's really all about getting the equations down. Okay. All right. So be, be prepared for thinking that way. You know, don't just go to MATLAB when you start trying to write this stuff down. My suggestion is, you know, really write this out on paper because that's where the learning is really happening. All right. Um, okay. So then that's two equations. So I got one equation here. And then here's my second one. All right, what's my third? IA minus IB equals 0.4 V delta. Yep, so my third one, he said was IA minus IB is equal to that dependent current source, 0 0.4 V delta, okay? So if you look at that, Right, so I have IA goes with the arrow, IB goes against the arrow. So that's why the signs are the way they are, okay? And what is V delta? IC times R3, so 0 0.4 times IC times R3. So if I write that over here, my third equation becomes, uh, I A minus I B minus 0 0.4 R3 times I C equals zero. Now, one thing I, I don't like about just having numbers on these things is this is just, you know, my own, you know, kind of personal preferences on these is that number 0 0.4 just think about that for a second. I don't, part of the reason why I don't like that number is I think this screws up a lot of people. This thing is a current source, right? I have a current that depends on a voltage. What are the units on 0 0.4? That's a number, it has units. What would its, what would its units be? Yeah. Amps per volt. Amps per volt, which would be one over ohms if we wanna think of it that way. But I, I mean, part of the reason why I like to do this is when I, when I look at these equations, 
one of the things you guys will see you lose a lot of points for, and you, you lost a lot of points for it on, on exam one, is when you write a KCL equation and you put a voltage in it, or when you write a KVL equation, and you put a current in it. I see that all the time, right? I like looking at this and saying, I know these are voltage equations of IA times R is volts. IB times R is volts. IC times R is volts. These dependent sources throw me off. What's the units there on that 0 0.8? Volts per volt, which is no units, right? But it's vol volts per volt. We'll use that term because that we, we get into that a little bit. When we start getting into op amps, we'll get into a concept called gain. And when we start doing that, we talk about, well, if I put in one volt, I'll get two volts out. So there's a gain of two volts per volt, okay? Um, but I, again, those, those units are helpful for me to check to see that I have physically consistent equations, okay? Um, all right, anyway, at this point, I got to just put that stuff into, into MATLAB and try to solve it, okay? Now, part of the reason why I like to do this in terms of just these symbolic things is I can kind of look at it more easily because let's say that instead of a four ohm resistor right there, let's say it was a, it was a four ohm capacitor. So that would mean that it, its impedance would be negative J4, all right? That makes these relationships a lot trickier, doesn't it? Because then you get, you get, so think about this. You get, so if you looked at a term like V1 right here, so there's a minus that came from a KVL relationship. And then there's another minus that's gonna come in from the impedance, right? <clears throat> that's why I'd like to just keep it in terms of, like you'll see me when I, when I, I won't put J, negative J4 in this, I'll put Z sub C or something like that. So that way the negative sign is, is buried in somewhere else. Okay. And I don't need to think about the capacitor more than I want to. Okay. All right. So if I, if I did that, I could plug those guys into MATLAB. And again, if you look at the way that I do that here, um, so my typical way of doing this is I define then all the R's and the V's. And then if you look carefully, again, this, this is consistent with the way that I try to give it to you in the homework there, is I, th I like to define each of the coefficients in that matrix and then throw the matrix together. Because then I can look very carefully at each individual step, right? And I can make sure that the equations I'm putting in are consistent with the ones that I wrote down on paper. All right, and there's a reason why I, I try to force you through that process is to, is to really try to force you to think how you write it on paper versus how you enter it in MATLAB. MATLAB is a tool to help the calculation. It's not where you should start your work, okay? All right, questions about that? All right, once I, once I got this, the actual problem itself is saying, what is V naught? All right, so let's say I wanted to find V naught there. So V naught's defined as the voltage there between mesh A and mesh B. How would I find that? If I asked that question. How would I find V naught? Uh, since it's right above the reference node, I suppose you could do nodal now knowing what the currents coming in uh, to the node are. Um, okay. Let me ask you this. Why do we do, why do, we do mesh or nodal? This is a, this, well, why, why do we do, I mean, why do any of it? I don't I mean, I just, so mesh and nodal, basically what they are is if I, if I know the voltages at these nodes, then I can do what with that information? Find the current. I can find out anything I want to about that circuit. All right. Whether it's the currents in each element, the voltages on each element, whatever. I'm, 
there's no need for me to do anything further at this point. If I want to know what V naught is, if I know IA, IB, and IC, then I can figure out everything in that circuit. So I don't need to do another analysis per se. So knowing that, how could I try to figure out what V naught is? Um, so. IB times R5. Okay, I no, right? V naught's defined as the voltage across this, this particular guy right here, okay? So why not a KVL around the mesh on the left, the IA mesh, okay? So just remind, reminding ourselves how we defined it. V1 was minus to plus, V6 was plus to minus. So let's go minus, plus, and let's go plus, minus like that or no what did we do we did the other way plus well 0 0.4 v delta if i so 0 0.4 v delta is the current there right that doesn't help me to figure out that voltage right so so if i want to if i want to go through and, and figure out what v naught is let's do kvl around the mesh a kvl right to the side here, KVL, if it'll let me, KVL around mesh A. So zero equals, and let's start here in this corner. So I would do, what would I do with the voltage source? Yes, so negative 193. Yeah. Negative 193 minus V1, so and what would I do for the current source? Plus V naught minus, I, what did I call this? I called this originally V6, right? Minus V6, okay? And what I do is I'm gonna rearrange that and say V naught is equal to 193. And then what? What else is in that equation? So I'm just, V1 plus V6, I mean V6. Plus V1 plus V6. So I would say 193 plus, so V1 is four IA times. times R1. So IA times four, we'll just say, All right? IA times four. And then V6 is what? IA times R6. Yeah, IA times R6, which is six. So once I know the mesh current, I just need to plug those mesh currents in there to solve for it, right? And I'll be able to figure that out. There is no other tool that I, that I could use necessarily. I guess if I wanted to, um, I don't know, if I did nodal, I, I don't know. I don't know what this node is right now. So I, if I write a KCL at this node, I don't know. Well, I guess I do know what that current is and I know what this current is. And I know what this is, but that's not that's not necessarily gonna gonna help me out, right? Um, the the key thing is here is now what I know is if I know I A, I can figure out anything I want to in that circuit. If I know the mesh currents, figure out anything. If I know the node voltages, I can figure out anything. Okay, that's kind of the the key idea, right? The other the other the key tools in the toolbox are KVL and KCL. Right, so if, if I can define everything around this loop, which I can around mesh A, then doing KVL will tell me what V0 is, okay. Hey, okay, but um, so, you know, with doing the nodal though, so we do have an equation there for defining IA3 in a, a nodal method and we have a known node above the source, which means that, you know, so we would have like- What is that, what is that known node? You don't know this node voltage here. No, no, above, uh, above the source, 193. And so, because we don't so, know, so that, I mean, what I, do, you, do, is you, now. do you, do you really? <laughs> well, I guess not if you have to pose the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the challenge I have here is, okay, you know, where's my ground? My ground is here, right? Yes. So if my ground is here, is this a node that I know necessarily? It's in other words, it's not 193. Right. It's, it's now, what is it? It would be. I, I could say that it's 193. If I wanted to say that, that I could say this voltage is 193 plus V6. Hmm. 
You're asking a good question, man. You could, you could do it, right? All I, all I would need to do is if I know this node and I know the voltage across and I know this current, I guess if I know this node and I know this current, but then technically that's the same exact thing I just did right here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. For that equation we just did for B naught, did we go in the opposite direction? Oh. We went the same. We went the same way. So I started here, right? And maybe I'll let me draw it in red. So I went through this way, like that. So I went oh. the same direction. Okay. Now the thing to remember is I could go the other direction. That's okay. Like if I if I started here, and I went the other way, I'd get the same equation. Okay. You want me to show you that? I think I got it. It's basically what you're going to get is everything's going to have a minus sign on it. It's still going to be equal to zero. That's the same equation. Gotcha. Let me, let me do that real quick, just to make sure that that's clear. So if I, if I started here and I went in the counterclockwise direction, I would get V1 plus 193 plus V6 minus V0. Those equations are the same, aren't they? Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, they're basically, I multiplied each side by minus one, right? That's the same equation, right? All right, so it doesn't really matter which, which way you go. My, my suggestion is pick a direction you like and, and go with that. I, I usually almost always start in this bottom left corner and go around. Why, I don't know. Usually because the voltage sources are on the left side and I start at the bottom of the voltage source usually. <clears throat> now, the question that, uh, that Matthew was asking there, right? Is, is, this is very similar to, I think if you look at it, uh, I don't know if I have it readily available, but I think, and I probably don't and probably shouldn't waste time looking for it now. But if you look at problem, oh boy. Um, I don't want to do that. Um, if you look at, pro I think it's problem three. It's problem three or problem four on the homework. There's a situation, I don't want to try to pull it up now, but there's a situation where I got a node here. A it's a capacitor, actually, I think it is. Capacitor and a voltage source. And then here's another node and there's some stuff and some stuff and some stuff and some stuff. When I have a situation like this, um, if I tried to solve for this node and this node here, that's tough to do, isn't it? Yeah. It, it is because this is the same sort of situation where I don't know this node. If I, if I knew that this was 10 volts and I knew this node right here and I knew this node right here, I could say V2 minus this voltage is 10. But if I know this node, that's a different story. I actually have to figure out this voltage would basically be, um, just, just to be clear, if I know this current right here, I would have to say that it's, right, this, this node would be V1 plus the voltage on that capacitor would be this node. And if this node is V2, then I have 10 equals V2 minus V1 plus Vc. That's not a recommended the pro. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try thinking about that. I have, typically when I have problems, what I, my, my basic way of thinking is when I have problems that involve voltage sources, that's a good time to do mesh, right? Because with mesh, I'm writing KVLs and I know what the voltages are in those cases. All right. So, so that I tend to write mesh equations when I have voltage sources. All right. All right, questions about that one? All right, we've done a lot of these now, right? So it's, the key thing is really you guys get in the practice. Again, all the practice is really in getting the equations set up, right? Beyond that, it's, it's not that particularly difficult to do it, okay? All right, so let's say I've got this circuit here. All right, um, and this was my example three, but I decided to do it first, okay? 
And I actually did this one two different ways. So what I want to do is I want to, the, the way I took this out of a book and the book said, find the voltage across the 50 ohm resistor. So from A to B, all right, find that voltage using Thevenin. So take the 50 ohms out, make a Thevenin equivalent, and then um, put the 50 ohm back in, okay? Let's say I don't want to do that. Okay, I, I mean, I don't think you guys probably like that approach anyway. Um, we'll try it, but if you had this circuit and I said, I said to you, find the voltage across that 50 ohm resistor, what, what does this circuit sort of scream out potentially? Mesh. Mesh, I think mesh, yeah, for sure, right? So the way I would approach this one is I would say, let's call this mesh A. So this is I A. I'll call this IB, I'll call this IC, and this way they're all going the same direction this time. Now, what's my first step here? You define your... Define my polarities, right? I mean, a couple of people said that. That's, it's good that multiple people say it. It means it's catching on, right? So I've got that. Um, here, I'm gonna write my polarities that way for this one. Let's say I did it this way for this one and this way for that, okay? All right, so that's gonna be my basic definition. And let me see, I'm gonna not go full screen, that way I can copy and paste. So here, okay, good. All right, so what should I do? What's my first step here? Write down my KVLs. Yeah, so zero equals, I guess I didn't give these things, these voltages names, but I, I guess I'll give them names. I'll call this V1. Should give myself more space here. I'll call this V2. Here's my IA. I'll call this V3. I'll call this voltage here V4. And then this guy over here will be VAB. And that's the guy I'm looking for. Okay. All right. So let's start with mesh A, right? Zero equals what? If I'm going around and we'll go around the loop like this, right? So minus 136. And it's angle zero, so I'm going to leave that out. Okay. I'll say mesh A. Okay. So then what? Then what, what happens next? Plus V1. Plus V1. Plus V3. All right, so 136 equals V1 plus V3. All right, now, doing my passive sign convention, how do I define V1? Again, I don't even look at the minus signs, plus signs, whatever in that equation. I just say, okay, what is V1 in terms of passive sign convention? What current goes into the plus terminal on V1? A, hey, hi. What is it? IA. IA, yeah. So IA, and then it looks like IB comes out. I mislabeled this one over here. I called this IA as well. Okay. IA minus IB times, I'm going to say ZL. Okay. Where I'm going to say ZL is J40. And I'm going to say Z sub C is minus J15. Okay. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. All right. Then what do I do for mesh B? Zero equals what? A negative of V1. Negative V1. Then I go plus the minus on the capacitor, so plus V2. Then what? Oh. What's I called that guy VAB in the middle. Plus VAB? Minus VAB. Oh, minus, actually. Yeah, yeah, because I go minus to plus. Yeah. Now that branch in the middle is a good example of this kind of thing where why I like to do it this way, because Again, I think if you go straight to the currents in this step, this is where the mistakes come in, right? Because you'll, you'll, you're watching too many things at once. 
all right? And it sh I just try to watch the signs on the voltages. Then you watch the signs on the currents. Do them two separate steps, okay? So let's say, so now I'm going to start putting my currents in. Forget the minus signs. V1, I just bring the minus on down. For V1, how do I write that? What current goes into the plus terminal? IB minus IA. No. Which current goes into the plus terminal? IB, actually. IA minus IB. Yeah, IA minus IB times ZL. Now, that's going to become IB minus IA because of the minus sign in front. But again, I don't like thinking about all that. I, that's too much for my brain to think about at once. Uh, yeah. All right. Maybe you can manage it better than I can, but I, I, I certainly can't. All right. Now, the next one I got is, is that if I keep going around, if I'm going around that loop like this in a counterclockwise direction, or sorry, clockwise direction, right? Clockwise. I went through the inductor. Then I go into the capacitor. So there's a plus that we've already determined that we just bring down from the original equation. In this case, what current goes into that capacitor? IB. And I'm gonna say IB times Z sub C. Now why, reason why I do that again is, what's wrong with Z sub C? What do I not like about Z sub C? It also has a negative sign. There's three negative signs that come into play, right? One from, one sign can come from KVL, one sign can come from Ohm's law, another can come from the impedance. There's all sorts of places you can screw up, right? So walk it through slow, okay? All right, then minus VAB. So I put a minus sign in because that minus sign was there in the KVL. And then what is VAB? All right, IC goes into the plus terminal. So you follow that IC around, it would go into the plus terminal. IB would come out of the plus terminal and that's times 50, like that. Okay, questions about that at all? Professor, we didn't finish the um, equation for mesh A. Uh, we did, didn't we? Oh, I, forgot, never, the, I forgot the V3, V3 term. Three. See, there's lots of places to make mistakes. All right. That's also part of the reason why I like to see it symbolically, because then I can, before I enter the MATLAB, I can kind of see what I did wrong. Now, I'm not saying I would have seen that, but uh, what did I have? We had IA minus IB times Z sub L. All right. And then what about the V3 term? So I bring the plus sign down, first of all, right off the bat, right? IA goes into the plus terminal. IC comes out of the plus terminal times 40. Okay. All right. The other reason I like to keep things symbolic is like I said in my mind, when I look at this, 136 volts equals amps times ohms. Amps times ohms. If I keep it symbolic, I can see this amps times ohms, amps times ohms, I can, and I can follow the units. And that's useful to me to be able to check to make sure that I'm getting consistent equations. All right, so now we got to do mesh C. All right, mesh C is on the bottom. So we called this just to be, so this was V4. This was V3. This was VAB. Okay. All right, so mesh C, let's do that one. Negative V3. Plus yeah, so, so yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, negative V3. Plus V4. Well, so I got to go through this middle branch here. So plus VAB. That was the voltage that I defined across this 50 ohm, so plus to minus. And then plus V4. Yep. Okay. And then... Again, I just carry down the minus sign. So minus, then I look at the, at the relationships here. So which current goes into the plus terminal on V3? IA. IA, then IC comes out, that times 40, okay? Then I have VAB. Again, I just carry the plus sign down, right? And so which current's going into the plus terminal on VAB? I see. C goes in, IB comes out times 50. 
okay? And then V4, I got a plus sign up above, so I carry that down. And then what current goes into the plus terminal? This guy's straightforward. All I just IC. Yeah, all I have is IC. IC times 10. Then I would group all those terms. I've got three equations and three unknowns that I can throw into MATLAB. Okay. And I've got the code that I've used for that one. Do I actually have it opened up? Somewhere in my millions of tabs, I do. Um, I probably shouldn't even. I wasn't even planning to show you the code, but if I if I did the code, <clears throat> right? Basically, all I do is same sort. Of, I group my terms, I plug in my values, I solve it then, right? Um, I'll give you that code so you can you can take a look at it, right? The the key thing is if I asked you for what is VAB, how would you solve that? Once you've gone through this, if I said to you, tell me what VAB is. Yeah, once I, I have the currents, it's easy. IB minus IC times the resistor <clears throat> value. Almost. IC minus IB. IC goes into the plus terminal, right? Times 50, like that. Okay. All right, so it's all about the signs. That's why I say take it, take it slow and, and you'll get it right. My focus on the exam is going to be get me the equation, not get me the numbers. Because then you're going to waste time on crap that honestly isn't that useful. Okay. Take it, take slow walk it and get the equations right. That tells me that you know what's really going on. Okay. All right. So questions about what I did up through there. Okay, you guys are getting really bored with it now. All right, how many, how many different problems can we do? The thing for, for you is really to practice these problems. All right, um, I opened up all the relevant sections in chapter seven and whatever the circuits one companion is chapter three or four. All right, so there's lots of things for you guys to do. As you get ready for the exam, look going through those problems is, is a good way to, 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 to do this, okay? Now, the other way that I, I said that the, this, again, this was a book problem in the book that I looked in and said, well, all right, do this by removing the 50 ohm resistor. So find VAB. So find VAB. VAB by remove the 50 ohms. And then find essentially a Thevenin and equivalent. Remove 50 ohms, find a seven and equivalent. And then replace the 50 ohms. All right, so what, what that means is take the 50 ohms out. So if I take the 50 ohms out, here's 136. That's a really bad inductor. All right, here's my ZL. There's my ZC. Here's B. Here's A. Here's my 40 ohms. Here's my 10 ohms. All right. Basically, it's saying find a seven and equivalent looking into these terminals, right? And convert that into basically some V open circuit some, I guess I should not draw it just as a resistor, but some ZEQ, right? And then put the 50 ohms there, right? And that should be, the idea is that VAB should be the same as the VAB that I just found here, all right? Two equivalent ways of solving the same problem, okay? So I wanna try that and I wanna see and I just select this. All right. So, all right. So there's that circuit. So 
I want to find the open circuit voltage here, VOC. VOC is the open circuit voltage there at those terminals A and B. <clears throat> so essentially it's VAB in this circuit. All right, so it's, so how would I, how would I find that? What would be a good way to try to find that? VAB equals VA minus VB. VA minus VB, that's correct. So what, how should I do that? What's a have to do uh, the voltage divided. No, no, voltage is the same. So you have to find the current through. This the is a voltage divider situation, right? I could do nodal analysis or something, I guess, but this is a voltage divider. How do you, know? so in this case, I know the voltage across each of those branches. And what's true about the branch here with ZL and 40? They have the same what? In series. Current. Current. Yeah, they have the same current. So they're in series, right? So VA would be 136 times what over what? And let's, let's not even think about it that way. So in, th in this case, when I have a voltage divider, they're in series. So I figure out the current. What's the current through that branch? 136 divided by what? ZL plus 40. ZL plus 40. And then I want to figure out the voltage across that 40 ohm resistor. So what do I need to multiply that current by? 40. 40. Okay, think of it that way. I mean, the, you, there's formulas to remember and there's, there's Ohm's law, right? I like to just think in terms of Ohm's law. What's VB? Same approach, right? What's the current in that branch? 136 divided by ZC plus 10. 136 divided by ZC plus 10. That's the current. And to figure out the voltage at point B, it's what? times 10, right? And so VA, v, the open circuit voltage would be this guy minus this guy. Okay. And that's, that's pretty easy to put into MATLAB, right? I can define ZL, ZC, all that, put that in pretty easily. Questions about that? So, so yeah, so it's a question, Nasir, Nasir is how you say it? Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry, you're a different person. I, somebody else, Nasir had emailed me about the rooms. Anyway, um, there's only, only, one, only one person here. All right, so uh, the question he's asking, how, how, do I, how did I see that, right? So if I look at this, the, the key thing is, I know the voltage across a branch. If I know the voltage across a branch, then I, I have a voltage divider relationship that I can apply, right? If I know the current entering, if I knew the current here, I could say I had a current divider that I could do to figure out the currents in those branches, right? But in this case, it's very easy for me to do the voltage divider because I know the voltage across the series combination. So, yeah, so, so if you want to think about how did I get VAB, if I, if I think about this right here, as I go around it, so think of it as here's V40, here's V10, like that. If I did that KVL, I would say zero equals V40 plus VAB plus, uh, let's see, no, I'd be minus V40 plus VAB plus V10. Right, so I go around, over, and then down, right? That's how I can, I'd see VAB would be this voltage here minus this voltage here. Okay. All right. 40 and 10. What's that? So why don't you multiply VA by 40 and VB by 10 at the end? Well, so yeah, the V40 is, is, is saying it's the voltage across that element, which, is, which I'm just saying is the current through that element times the, times the impedance. All right, gotcha, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so then I guess the other piece for me is if I have this same circuit again, what do I, and I gotta find the ZEQ, right? How do I do that? Turn off the voltage source. Turn off the voltage source, which does what to a voltage source when I turn it off? 
open, yeah, opens it up, right? Or sorry, shorts it, turns it. So taking a voltage source and turning it off means setting its voltage to zero, which means it turns it into a current source, which, oh, sorry, I gotta be careful with my wife. So I'm reading my notes and talking at the same time. If I, if I take a voltage source and turn it off, voltage source off means zero volts, which means it's short, all right? If I turn it off, okay? So this guy becomes a short circuit, okay? So I got a short circuit here and I got ZL and I've got my 40 ohms like that. Then I got my Z sub C. Then I have my 10 ohms. And then I need to find the impedance looking into these terminals here. So how do I approach that? <laughs> From the outside. Yeah. This is a this is a tricky one probably for you guys to think about. I suspect. So ZL in forty in parallel. What's in parallel? ZL in forty ohm. So so it's, yeah, the way to think about this. I, like I said before, is it's always what's the impedance that's seen by a source that I connect at the terminals, All right? So I could do the test method if I wanted to, but let's just say I, you know, I, I want to think that way. So here's I test. Where would I test go? Well, it would enter here, and then here, right? Then where would it go? But it's short. Would it? So the capacitor and the resistor. It has to be short. It, 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 well, I don't even. Oh, I don't even it's hard for me to even fully wrap my head around where it goes, right? What What do I know about? It? What does current have to do? If it, If current went in and then around, then it would never leave, would it? But But I'm putting a current in here. So what has to happen to it? It has to come back out. So if it If it leaves here, it better come back here. So what's it going to do? It's going to go this way in this way and go like that. So there's some of the current's gonna go this way, some of the current's gonna go that way. You guys follow that? I have a question. Kind of wacky. It, it is, isn't it? <laughs> it is wacky, yeah. So I mean, this is a hard way, this is probably harder than I would kind of ask you to think about it, but it's, it's one of those things of the way, way that I think about this is, is basically I've got a situation where I test comes in and I heard a couple of people say it, ZL, well, maybe nobody said it, I don't know. ZL and 40, here's I test comes in here, right? And goes into that, goes into that parallel combination. So I say in ZL and 40 are in parallel. You guys follow why I say they're in parallel? So would there be any current through the short circuit? Nope. Yeah, because they have the same voltage. Yeah. So what, what you end up finding is that the, the net voltage around this would be, um, would be zero, right? So if you think about it, the voltage across these two guys are the same. So there's, there's no current going around that guy. So there's the idea out there everybody always has, well, I have a short, so there must be tons of current through a short. Well, it's, it's all, but the other key thing is current flows in a loop, right? So if current went into this, the question is how the heck would it get out of there, right? And still, and still keep KCL maintained, right? So there's a KCL that exists at this node there's a KCL that exists at this node, but I know physically that the current that came in here better go out there, right? So none of it can really make a turn this way. It's all got to go this way. So this is, this, is a, this is a pretty tricky one, but the way I would think about it is what's really going on is here's the 10 ohm. Here's the ZC, right? And I would say it's like that. 
right? The you you could effectively um, look at it in that sort of an arrangement. All right. This is this is a this is a pretty tricky uh, pretty tricky circuit to to think about. Okay. I have a question. Um, yeah. So like. In that situation, how does current like know not to flow in that direction? Like, if there's no resistance there in the first place, like how does it know it would just stay there? If that makes any sense. Well, so let's say I let's say I gave you that problem like this, and the the way of thinking that through, I would say if you're not if you're not sure. Well, you could just say, well, do, do mesh analysis around this thing or something like that, right? If I do mesh analysis, that just relies on KCL and KVL. And what I'll find out is the current over here is zero. The reason it knows that quote unquote is because the physics tell it it has to be. In other words, case, the combination of KCL, KVL and Ohm's law are such that that has to happen. Like looking at this picture here, right? Zero equals, if I define, right? Zero equals the VL plus V40. If you think about that, VL and V40 have to be opposite of each other for that to be true. So the currents are gonna make sure that they balance each other so that that happens. This, this is a, probably a trickier problem than I would, I would give you guys on a test, but I think it's a good one to think through. All right. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I thought that um, current followed, um, what do you call it? Path of no resistance. So I guess there's an exception. To or. Well, so I don't like that terminology, I guess. I, and I've tried to be careful about using, because People say path of least resistance, path of no resistance. In this case, if, if I have a, you know, why is there no current through this loop? Well, there's no current through this loop because if I do a KVL around, around this thing, I would find that IA has to be equal to zero because these voltages here have to balance each other. The voltage on the inductor and the voltage on the 40 ohm resistor have to balance each other. So there's, there's no voltage source that's driving current over that direction. Is, is the reason why that's happening. So um, if, if, you, if you think about it in this particular case, if I, if, if I had a different arrangement, then that wouldn't be true. So I, the reason I don't like that whole sort of statement about it follows the path of least resistance or the path of no resistance or whatever is that's just some memory rule that exists for certain situations. KCL and KVL never lie. All right, so I, I prefer those those approaches because they'll tell me when it when it matters. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to know if they're like if there is like an exception kind of thing. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's not really an exception per se, right? Mm -hmm. This is a tricky one. All right, that's why I didn't do it this way. I, I, but that's that's the way that it was is asked. I think it's a tricky one. You know, if you're never sure, then, you know, looking at something like this, if, if I said, well, give me a seven and equivalent looking into here, what, what I would probably do if I'm not sure is I would put a test source here and I would do mesh or something like that to figure out what to do. Yeah. Okay. It, it does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in a lot of ways, I think if, if I were teaching circuits one, I probably would teach mesh and nodal first. Then I would teach all that stuff about looking at equivalent circuits. Because I think you guys look at the equivalent circuits and you're like, well, that looks hard. <laughs> and then you learn KCL and KVL or you learn mesh and node. You're like, well, that was a lot easier, right? Um, they're both useful. It's, you know, they're, the ones maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit trickier to see. Okay. All right. Um, in the time I've got left here, I don't have a whole lot of time to start a new example. Um, so I'm not going to. All right. Um, I just got a couple of minutes. You guys want to ask any questions? The time I got left. Uh, yeah, let's finish uh, this out and say, like, uh, what if we wanted a short circuit current through here? Because uh, I see an interesting thing where, like, you can make the terminals kind of go away because you'd be able to combine the uh, resistors in parallel, our uh, impedances up top in parallel, and then those could go in series with the voltage source. So is that something that's possible, or can we just not 
find the short circuit current here? You could, yeah. If I wanted to find the short circuit currents, I'd put that short in there, right? And then I would say, how do I find that short circuit current? Um, to, so if I, if I wanted to find the short circuit current, I'd put a short between A and B. I think at this, what I would probably do is, is I would probably try to do uh, a mesh. That's mesh or nodal is probably what, what I would try to do. I guess, you know, what's tricky about this one in particular, you're right, ZL and ZC are in parallel, 40 and 10 are in parallel. Um, and then, you know, in that particular case, you're gonna have a, you, you're gonna have, um, if you do that combination with the parallelness, you're gonna find a voltage here. You're gonna, right? So if you put ZL and ZC in parallel, so let me do it this way. Rather than just talking about, it, let me draw it. So I'd have 136. And I'd have up top ZL in parallel with ZC. And then on the bottom, I would have 40 in parallel with 10. Like that, right? And then I could find the voltage across here with the voltage divider. Then how would I figure out the short circuit current from that point? Any ideas? So when I say the easiest thing is I can find the voltage across here. So I'll call this V1. I could call this guy here V2. And what I could easily do if I, if I know V1 and I know V2 is I could figure out this current from V1 and I could figure out this current from V2 and then I could KCL to get this current right here, right? Because this current has to equal this current plus this current. Or again, probably a simpler approach in this case, I think that'll, that'll bake your brain a little bit less is here's IA, here's IB, here's IC. And I would say I short circuit is equal to what in that case? If I did mesh. IC minus IB. IC minus IB. Okay. There's no clear way to figure out a current in this loop because I don't have any relationship between voltage and current here. There, there is current through a short, but no voltage across it, right? So if I know the voltage across a short is zero, that doesn't mean there's no current going through it, right? I just, you know, V equals I times zero, right? So if you think about it for a second, if the voltage is zero, that doesn't mean I is zero. I could be a billion amps, right? Or it could be no amps. It all depends, right? So mesh is probably an easier way to think about it. That's a, it's a good question though. All right, anything else? Okay, so let me stop the recording.